UN Ambassador Nikki Haley believes political crisis in Africa could become a serious problem for the United States. Haley warned unresolved strife on the continent is a breeding ground for extremist groups. The UN Ambassador arrived in Ethiopia on Monday and will travel to South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of the Congo later this week. For more on this, we're joined tonight by John Sinalides. He is the former foreign policy principal at Trilogy Advisors. A new hot spot. Listen, listen to what the United States is saying here, John. Uh, a breeding ground. Uh, political crisis in Africa. Now what? What does this all mean? And is it true? It's not really a very new hot spot, Ed. Uh, we established AFRICOM in 2007 to deal, as Manila said before, with the spread of radical Islamist terrorism, mostly in the Sahara region in northern Africa. Uh, President Obama sent several hundred U.S. forces into Niger specifically to help that government and that military deal with the threat from Boko Haram south in Nigeria, uh, Al-Qaeda in Mali, which is to the west of Niger, an Islamic State, which is in Libya, north of Niger. Mm -hmm. And we now have about 10,000 missions throughout the continent in about 20 countries, about 10, uh, I'm sorry, 3,500 missions a year, about 10 a day throughout the African continent, helping militaries in about 20 countries deal with radical Islamism within their borders. What do you make of the Pentagon being slow with details on what happened to the four American soldiers? I don't really have a good explanation on that, Ed. Um, I think they're trying to figure out what happened over there. I think they were as stunned as anyone else because there seemed to be conflicting reports about the level and the quality of the intelligence. Apparently, our men who were out on the ground helping the military had conducted this type of an operation on many occasions, and there was never any sense that they were being trailed, followed, and the like. So there must have been some intelligence violation on the ground there. And I think we want to get all the information first yeah. before we put it out publicly. So can we come to the conclusion that the United States is going to be involved in Africa for years to come? We will be escalating our military operations in Africa in the, in the years to come as we continue to see many of these Islamic groups, especially now that Islamic State is being defeated in Syria and Iraq. It's popping up in northern Africa, in central Africa, in countries as far away as the Philippines and South Asia. We're going to be in Africa for many years to come, probably with an escalated military commitment. And all of their funding is coming from where? Their resources? Which resources? Well, resources of their firearms, of their material, their ability to organize and communicate. Mm -hmm. How are these groups growing in Africa? Uh, they are able to take advantage of very, very difficult situations in terms of lack of governance, corruption, uh, what happened in Libya. So they go where things are weak. Of course they do. That's yeah. where they're able to thrive. Okay. So is there a strategy right now by the United States, or are we basically following what the Obama administration did, was that they would basically hit and run? No, I don't know if there's a specific strategy for the continent. I think it's really on an individual country basis. But this is part of an operation of what they call foreign internal defense. Mm -hmm. We're helping African countries, African governments, African militaries defeat terrorists within their midst. We're doing training. We're doing advisement. We're working on those types of relationship building and capacity building, hoping to minimize the direct um, sort of exposure of our troops to terrorists and other nefarious types. Uh, quickly, yeah. uh, United States forces, special ops, are they getting help anywhere else? Or is this a coalition of any sort? Or is this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The French have had 3,000 troops in Mali for mm -hmm. a number of years, ever since this really became an issue in the Sahara region. In other parts of Africa, though, it's probably more the United States on its own. Again, it depends on the country and the relationships those governments are also able to bear. John Sidalides, thank you so much. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. You bet.